Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is obviously gonna be very different than anything I have ever put here on my channel, but this video is also long, long overdue. So I've been really, really open that we have adopted throughout the years here on Lux Mommy, and you guys have had a ton of questions, and I've really, really wanted to do an adoption story video for the longest time, but if I'm being honest, I really didn't know where to start. I didn't really know what you guys wanted to know, what questions you had. So I decided to ask you. So a couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys for some questions and that is what these videos are gonna be about. I'm gonna do two, maybe three parts. It really just depends on how this series unfolds. This first part, I want to really focus on the process of adoption. Before we started the process, what the process looked like and basically our mindset what it looked like and things like that. So I was really surprised by the questions that you guys had. I didn't realize that y'all were so interested in the process portion of adoption. So I think it's really important to kind of tell our story of what the process looked like and why we decided to go this route and basically the different options that we looked at. So that's what this this uh, particular video is gonna be about. If you are new here to my channel, my name is Amanda. I hope you guys decide to stick around, hit that subscribe button, that notification button, especially for more like adoption story videos. But my typical content is fashion, luxury, lifestyle, beauty, things like that. So this is again, a little bit different for my channel, but very, very long overdue. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I want it to be like a Q&A slash story time. That's kind of my process. I wanted you guys to be a little bit more involved in these um, adoption story videos than just me sitting down and talking because honestly, there's so many different routes and ways that I could go about making an adoption story. And I love that you guys, like I can kind of see here, I printed out all of your questions. I can really see what you guys are wanna know. What are you curious about? What do you wanna know? What, what part of our story are you interested in? And so that's why I really wanted to create this video and that is why I will have to do two, maybe three parts because I got so many questions. So let's go ahead and get started with our adoption story part one. So those of you that are really interested in the process portion, it might be a good idea to get a notepad and pen just so you can mark down the dates that I'm talking about so you can kind of see timelines, timeframes, um, at least for our specific process. The thing about the adoption process is, is that it is not a one size fits all. Your process is going to be probably different than mine, but I can at least give you an example of what we went through so that you could have somewhat of an idea of what the process could potentially look like. So let's go ahead and dive into probably the most asked question, and that is simply, why do we decide to adopt versus just having our own biological children? And the fact of the matter is, is we tried. So for many years, we did try to have children naturally. Um, we did go to a couple of different doctor's appointments, had some procedures, but we never did anything super invasive. I um, just really wasn't interested in doing like IVF or anything like that. I just personally wasn't. Um, I don't know how to fully explain it, but when we got to a point with the doctor that we couldn't really figure out the issue and there really wasn't anywhere to go other than going to the next step of fertility treatments and things like that. It just felt like the end of that process for us. So we decided to look the other way. So my husband's mother was adopted and I always felt growing up that I would adopt. I don't know how to explain that. I remember as a teenager, I would even say to my mom that I was going to adopt children. I wasn't gonna have my own. And I never said it with the true intentions of that being the reality, but I always knew that back in my mind, I wanted to adopt one day, whether it was adopt and have biological children or whatever it was, but I knew that I would adopt one day. And then because my, my mother-in-law was adopted as well, it was also something that my husband was familiar with. It was part of his life as well. So it was just honestly a natural next step for us that we would look into that. And when we started looking into the adoption process, we looked, honestly, first we looked overseas. I think a lot of times in this culture, you hear a lot about children overseas. You don't really hear so much about children locally. You don't really see that on TV. You see and you hear about all the children in different countries that need help. And so we started the process of looking 
at other countries and what that would look like, what it would cost. And to be honest, um, the first thing that we noticed is it was very expensive. You are going to spend anywhere from, and this was back when we looked, so keep that in mind. The price may be different today, but it was anywhere from thirty to $50,000. And depending on the country that you were adopting from, you might have to move there for a period of time because you actually actually had to be like living there or staying there during the paperwork process. And so it was going to be not only expensive, but it also was gonna really disrupt um, our everyday life more than typical because like moving to another country for a couple of months, that's a big deal. Like that's a really, really big deal. The next thing that we noticed was the wait list. So in some countries, still to this day, the wait list is years not just a year, it could be five years or more. And that just felt like a really, really long time for us. We had already been trying for a while with our doctors. And so for us to wait that long, maybe even longer, just felt, it just wasn't something that we wanted to do. So then we started looking more of domestic adoption here in the United States. And I came across the CPS. I don't know how to fully explain and I don't know why, but at the time we just weren't really aware of how much need there was here in our own city. And so I started doing some research and I realized that there were a lot of children in need here in the Houston area. And so that is the process that we took. So we adopted through the state, CPS is what it's called here. So the first thing that we did was we secured an adoption agency and the adoption agency that we used was, I believe it was called Spalding. Um, I don't believe they exist any longer, but there are a ton of different adoption agencies here in the Houston area. I know there's Depelchin. I believe there is Catholic Christians something. There's, there's several here that can help you. Spalding became something else. I cannot remember the names. I can try to remember to link some down below, but that is the route we did. We did reach out to a few different agencies before we decided on the one that we went with. Um, and honestly, I couldn't be more like happy with the caseworker that we were put with. She, she was incredible. She was amazing. I think about her still to this day. Um, I'm not going to lie after those monthly meetings, I kind of missed her because she was really just an incredible person. And I don't think that's always the case, um, all the time because you really just never know. Uh, I feel like we clicked, but she was not only just, not only did we click, I just really, really respected her and I just felt like she became almost like a part of the family. She was kind of like a little package deal. So yes, I would reach out to a couple of agencies. I definitely wouldn't try calling just one and going from there. I would call multiple, go to maybe one or two orientations or three or four orientations and see which agency feels right for you and your family. And this one just felt right for us. And that's why we decided to go and go forward. That was the only orientation that we went to. I think maybe we went to one more orientation. I really can't remember, but I know that we decided with this one. And when we got matched with our adoption caseworker, it, it was just the perfect match for us. Once you pick an adoption agency, you go to like the first like initial orientation meeting and you kind of get the details. Our first adoption meeting was February of 2012. You basically sit in this room with all these other families and couples that are looking to adopt or foster and you are you go through a list of all of the requirements, the requirements that you would need to, not only classes that you would have to take, certifications that you would have to do, expectations that they would require for your home. And you get these like, this like whole deck of expectations. Um, and from that orientation, you decide if you are willing to move forward or you are not. And obviously we were willing to move forward. So that is what we did. To be honest, I really can't remember all of the specifics, but I do remember we had to take 40 hours of classes each. And these classes were very sporadic. So if there was one particular, like let's say there was a CPR class, maybe it was this Monday and this Thursday of this month, and then it was this Friday and this Tuesday of this month. So they were very, very sporadic and very random. Keep in, keep in mind, you know, working full time, I was traveling a lot for my job, um, things like that, having to take sick days, having to take vacation days to take these classes. So it actually took us from, February 2012 to the beginning of December of 2012 to us for us to finish all of all of the requirements. So the requirements weren't just the 40 hours. We also had to get a health inspection on our home. We had to get 
a plumbing inspection of our home. We had to get, I believe, a safety inspection of our home. Like things like all the outlets had to be, everything had to be baby proofed because you really didn't know what age of child you were gonna get. We were specifically asking for an infant, a baby younger than a year old. So you had to prepare for that. You also had to have a room ready for a baby. So you had to have a crib, you had to have everything and all the necessities ready and waiting. And keep in mind, um, you're not gonna have like a baby shower, right? So a lot of the questions that I got were, was it expensive? The route that we went was not specifically expensive in regards to fees and stuff. Yes, there were fees. There were fees to get the health inspection, to get the, you know, certified for CPR. There were fees for the plumbing inspection and, and things like that. The fire marshal to come out to your house and inspect it. Like there were fees for everything and yes, it added up. But you have to think about, you have to baby proof your entire home. You had to buy an entire nursery. And since you're not having, you're not typically gonna have like a baby shower or anything like that for this. And in reality, you're buying an entire nursery of things and you don't even know if you're gonna get a baby that is aged for a nursery. And so for us, we decorated the nursery very neutral. And because we had requested, and I say requested, which I'll get to that in a minute. Um, we had requested a baby under one years old. That is what we assumed we would get. And so we decorated a nursery and you had to get prepared. So everything, we bought a swing, we bought a high chair. I mean, everything that you could possibly need for a baby, we bought it and we had ready at this house and waiting for that baby to just show up any day. So here's the thing, when it comes to those kind of expenses, they can be as high or they can be as low as you wanna be. So for us, we had fun with it and we bought a ton of stuff. We bought everything you could ever imagine and we were ready, like we were ready for a baby. So I do wanna backtrack just a little bit. A few of the questions were also asked if we ever fostered and yes that is the way that we decided so one of the things that you learn when you're in that initial orientation class um, for this particular process is you can either go the foster to adopt route or you can go straight adoption the thing with foster to adopt is and the reason why we opted to go that route versus just straight adoption is because if you go straight adoption you are kind of like second choice. And what I mean by that is first choice is always the home that the foster child is already in. So if the foster family wants to adopt the child that has already been staying in their home during the foster process, whenever they do um, like opt, like foster out, like become available for adoption, um, the foster family is always the first choice. They ask the foster family if they would like to proceed with the, the adoption process or not. And it would take a family to say, no, we're just fostering or no, we're not, you know, this isn't a good fit, whatever it is, whatever the reasonings are. And then they would call an adoptive family. So for us, we decided to take the risk and do the foster to adoption route. And so that is what we did. And um, I'll go a little bit deeper in part two of this, kind of what that looked like for us. I do wanna back up because I did have quite a few questions about expectations or requirements to go through the adoption process. I had someone say that they were going through recovery. I had someone say that they were single and not married. And um, there are no specific requirements in regards to being married or what you have been through. I would just say, if this is a process that you would like to go through, you do have to be very, very open about anything that you have gone through in the past. They will do an FBI check, they will do a background check, which also costs money. Those are the kind of things that you have little bitty fees here and there. Um, I wouldn't say the fees are extensive, but you know, 100 bucks here, 150 bucks here, it adds up. So I wouldn't say that it's expensive. Going the CPS route is definitely the least expensive of the adoption like options. If you compare going through the CPS route cost final, versus adopting overseas, adopting domestic, um, you know, fertility treatments, 
um, surrogacy, things like that, those cost tens of thousands of dollars and you just really don't have that when you're talking about fees going the adoption process through CPS. The fees are minimal if you compare them to those processes. Where you're going to get into spending a lot of money is really up to you. It's how expensive of a crib did you buy? How much did you spend on all of your baby furniture? Things like that. That can add up of course, but at the end of the day, you would buy those anyway for your child, no matter if you had them biologically or you adopted them or fostering them or whatever it is. You, you can definitely adopt if you are single. You can definitely adopt if you are open about any substance abuse or even criminal past that you have as long as you were honest with them. Another question I was asked is about age, if there were different age limits, whether you're younger or older, if, if that really matters. And that absolutely does not matter. When we were in our classes, there were definitely couples that were younger than us and there were definitely couples that were much older than us that were all going through the same exact process. So just keep that in mind. Age does not matter at all, whether you're single, married, um, whatever your sexual orientation, none of that matters at all for this process. Like I said, you just need to be honest about it, whether it's a criminal background or it's your sexual preference or it's things that you are dealing with, um, you know, divorce, whatever it is. Just be honest about it. That's really the most important thing. Another thing that I wanna mention about the process is that once you start the process, you actually immediately start having monthly visits from your caseworker. And basically what that is, is they're making sure that your house is in order, that it is baby proofed, that um, all of your medications and firearms are double locked. So not just locked once in a safe, but in a safe within a safe. Um, and so you start those monthly visits, Well, which I will admit were, I mean, it was great to get to know our caseworker and it was great, but it, it does kind of become a little bit redundant because you don't have a baby yet, but they're just checking because when you do get that call, they have to make sure that your house is ready. They have to make sure that you are prepared and they don't wanna have to call, come inspect your house and then bring you the baby. They want your house to be ready. And so that is basically what, uh, what it looks like. You will have monthly visits in addition to taking all your classes, getting all your certifications, getting all your spec inspections, things like that. So it is definitely a lot. So if you are working full time, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Um, it's worth it, but it is definitely a difficult process. It is definitely something that takes time. It's definitely something that um, can be a little bit cumbersome and even annoying at times. But at the end of the day, you have to look at the bigger picture. You have to look at why you're doing this and think that one day you're gonna have a family, the family that you're looking for, that child that you've been dreaming of and wishing for and praying for. And so even though the process can be very daunting, it's one of those processes that no matter what, you forget about all of the heartache, you forget about all the nuisances and, and you just remember the ending. You remember the final thing that you waited for. And so I'm not saying that we would ever do it again. Who knows? Maybe we'll talk about that in part two, but it was definitely worth it. So that actually answers um, a couple of the questions that I got was if I recommended this process and if I re recommended specifically adopting through the state. And I would absolutely say yes. If you were looking to adopt, um, there's a plenty of reasons why we chose to go through the state versus going international or some of the other routes. One was the cost. Spending the money on the process just didn't make sense to us. So at the time, that's the, si the route we decided to go. And I'm so grateful that we did. Not only is cost huge, but just actually knowing that there is literally children miles away that need a home right in our neighborhood, right in your community. And for us, that was a huge, huge thing for us. It really was surprising to realize how many kids go in and out of the system here locally. And so that was a huge reason why we decided to go through this specific process and why we chose CPS versus going other routes. Cost is a big difference and also just making a difference in a child that would otherwise either sit in foster or sit in an orphanage or whatever it was. So after the process of all the classes, the paperwork, getting all the certifications that we need, the next biggest question that we were asked is how long did it take to be chosen? So like I said, we started our first orientation class February of 2012. We finished our final paperwork, final classes, everything was all wrapped up 
the first week of December of 20, same year, 2012. And then we got our very first phone call for a baby two days after Christmas. So that is what the process looked like for us. Again, I do feel like we did take a while to complete everything just because of our specific circumstances, the way the scheduling worked out for classes, getting everything scheduled, getting all the certifications scheduled. I don't know if I would say it's long or short because I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to be honest. I think that you just have to do it within the time that you can do it. Um, and everybody, everybody's just availability is different. So I wouldn't say that ours was long. I wouldn't say that ours was short. I would just say ours was what it is. And we got our first call for a baby two days after Christmas. Another question that we were asked in regards to requirements was about minimum income. If there was a minimum income that you had to meet. And to be honest, I, I really don't know. Um, I do know that you, have to show that you can financially provide for a child. Now, I don't think that there is a minimum for that, but I'm sure there is some way that they determine that you can financially take care of a child. So I don't know the number to what that is. My suggestion would be to reach out to an agency in your local area. Another question that we were asked was about requesting um, certain age groups or certain specifics of a child. And yes, you can request really honestly whatever you want, whether you wanna request an age group, whether you wanna request an ethnicity, whatever it is, you can request it. But for us, we were open to everything. Um, we did prefer um, a baby. So we said one, or I believe he said newborn to three with the preference of newborn to one. And then as far as ethnicity, we said any ethnicity was fine with us. So I think that the more that you put in your requirements, the longer that you are going to wait. So you have to keep that in mind. If you are looking for a certain age group, newborns are going to be a little bit harder in, you know, because there's just less of them in this particular you know situation so if there is certain specifics that you are, are, are requesting um, just keep in mind the more specific that you are the longer that you may wait i mean you may get lucky but that's not the reality of it most of the case so we were open to any ethnicity and we were open to any age group but we really really asked if we could possibly stay between the ages of one and three with a preference of zero to one. We really wanted to experience the baby stages. We really wanted to experience it. Since it was going to be our first child, we really wanted to experience you know, the beginning years. We wanted to hopefully have this baby grow up in our family. And so that was our personal preference. But again, you can say anything, but just because you request that doesn't mean that that is the call that you are gonna get, which is actually case in point, how we requested one, we requested a single baby and we ended up with two boys that were basically toddlers. So you can request whatever you want and you can say no when you get that call, but I will say it just doesn't really always happen that way. I think during the process, we got four calls. We said yes to all four, three were placements and one what we it just it fell through but that is exactly the way the process works you can request really whatever you want any age group any anything that you want um, but it doesn't mean that that's the call you're going to get and you really don't know how long it's going to take if you're going to be very specific so keep in mind that this is what our process looked like like i said in the beginning of this video the adoption process, even if you go through the state, is not one size fits all. But I do think that this is, this will give you an idea of what the process could look like for you and your family and what to expect, what the expectations are. Um, I think it's a beautiful process. It's a difficult process. It is not, it's not easy at all. And I'll go a little bit deeper into the, what the process looks like after you get that first placement and then what it looks like from the foster to adopt process once you have um, children in your home and how things change um, because it's a completely different process of actually getting approved versus actually getting that adoption approved because that can be sometimes even more, actually no, it's definitely more difficult than the initial process. But again, 
you have to think about the bigger picture. You have to think about the goal here. And we'll talk about that more and I'll answer the rest of your questions in part two. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, that notification button so that you do not miss part two of our adoption story. And if you guys have any additional questions and you want me to answer them in part two or part three, make sure to put them in the comments down below. And like I said, if you are new here to my channel, my name is Amanda. It is so nice to meet you. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was really fun to talk about it. Like obviously this is like a huge, huge part of my life. And I love sharing this stuff with you guys. And I know today's video was more about the process. It wasn't so much about the emotions and the personal stuff of it. But I think that this is a really good segue to part two and potentially part three. So again, thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you guys in my next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.